Let's talk about the Sony a7 IV. Is it still a great camera in 2023? Spoiler alert, of course it is. So let's talk about it. Welcome back and let's talk about the Sony a7 IV and why I've been calling this camera for the past two years, the one. And there is a reason this camera excels at both things, at least in my situation. Great photography, great video quality. That's gonna be the main reason, pretty much. Before I used to pack two cameras, one for the photography work, one for the video work, but now I know that I can accomplish everything with one single camera. Now we're gonna talk about the features of this camera, but personally those features that do matter the most for me when it comes to photography and video. So let's start with the first one. And that one is gonna be the sensor because this camera features a 33 megapixel full frame backside illuminated sensor. What that means, it means that you're gonna get great images in photography and also you're gonna get great video quality. Now 33 megapixel is in the higher end of density, but it's not as crazy as the 61 or the 100 megapixels. So that means that this camera is also going to be great in low light situations where it is photography or video. So keep that in mind because a lot of people think that because this camera is not a 12 megapixel, it's way worse than, for example, the Sony a7S III. But in reality, this camera, in my opinion, comes in second place. And we gotta talk about the flip out screen because finally we have it in the Sony a7 IV. And Sony has been one of the latest player in the game giving us the flip out screen on a full frame body with touchscreen functionality. This screen flips in two directions. One is going to be for when you're facing behind the camera and the other one forward facing for when you're vlogging or shooting solo on a tripod. Now the Sony a7 IV features also the brand new menu with touchscreen functionality like I mentioned before. And one of my favorite settings is the My Menu option, which it allows you to store all your favorite settings right at the beginning. So this way you can actually access functions such as formatting with a tap of a finger like I have it right now. And of course, control the camera and tap to focus when you're shooting solo. Now let's talk about another reason and that one is going to be the EVF because whether you shoot photography or video, you are going to take advantage of this EVF, especially when shooting in bright situations where the screen, you know, it's not good enough for you, whether you're shooting video or photo to gauge your composition, your focus or whatever the case may be. Now through the EVF, you're going to be able to see a mirror of what is being projected on the screen. But the good thing is that you're going to be sealing your eyes with this membrane that the EVF has. So. Now this one is a big one for me, and it is the ability to control the exposure triangle with three dials. So in this camera, we have the back dial, which I have assigned to the shutter speed. Then we have the top dial known as the exposure compensation. Now Sony in this version has made it into a configurable dial. So you can configure it for whatever you want and have it assigned it to the ISO. Lastly, we have the front dial, which I have configured it to the aperture, thus controlling the exposure triangle in photo or video with those three dials. Now this one is a very personal one and it is the body. The Sony a7 line has what I call medium sized bodies. You know, when you compare it with other cameras or even when you compare this camera towards, you know, the higher end Canon or an Icon camera bodies that tend to be a lot bigger, right? I find that this body fits right in my hand. It also fits right with the lens selection that I've been choosing to carry lately. You know, I've been preferring smaller, lighter lenses, and sometimes I sacrifice aperture for that. Look at the setup that I have right here. This is the 24 to 70 f2.8 version 2, and the Sony a7 IV, and super compact. Now, this one is a huge one for me when it comes to photography, and it is the fact that this camera, unlike the Sony a7C, which is a camera that I used to carry before, or my APS-C cameras does one over 8,000 of a second with a mechanical shutter. So for video, it's not gonna matter too much. Usually we're gonna be running lower shutter speed, but for photography, it's really good to be able to adjust the exposure or darken your exposure by having a faster shutter speed. And of course, this camera can also shoot with the electronic shutter at one over 32,000 of a second. Pretty impressive. Now let's talk about video because here is where this camera becomes almost, almost the perfect camera to me, or at least the one camera that I bring. Now that's gonna be because this camera does 4K video up to 60p, 10 bit color, 4 to 2. Now the 4K 60 is gonna be with a 1.5 crop. And I know that a lot of people, you know, are disappointed. I mean, it's not ideal to have a crop, but I'm really happy that we have, 
you know, that option in this camera at this price. Of course, uh, there are cameras that are doing a 4K 120 at a much more affordable price, but you know, I figure the Sony has done that crop, you know, just to deal with image processing power and also deal with heat dissipation. Now let's talk about low light capabilities with the Sony a7 IV because what it is these days talking about cameras and not talking or complaining about low light. Now the good news is that there is nothing wrong to complain about because the Sony a7 IV performs really well in low light situations whether you're taking photograph or you're shooting video. Now on the video department it's not going to be an identical match to the Sony a7S III or FX3 for example but if you ask me this camera could comfortably sit on a second place. Now let's talk about recording limitations and the heating factor because this camera can shoot for extended period of times as long as you bypass the high temperature warning. Go to the menu, enable that, and I recommend you do that with all Sony cameras because it's going to allow you to record even when the camera gets hot. Now when I say hot, this camera can actually get pretty hot, not hot that it's going to burn your hand, but it gets hot especially after the one hour mark, you know, it starts getting pretty hot. Now, I remember overheating this camera once, and that was in a day out of shoot, a uh, sunny bright light here in Miami, 90 degrees Fahrenheit outdoor, and the camera did overheat even with a high temperature warning, where it shut down on me, but that was only after 1.5 hour of continuous recording in extreme conditions. Now, let's talk about video compression, and this one is one that is easy to overlook, and I recommend that this is one of the first thing you do in your camera choose the right compression format. Now, Sony cameras use the XAVC container, and this camera has three flavors to choose from. You have the HS, which is the smallest size, the S, and the I4K, which is the biggest size. So make sure that you choose the right one, especially if you're not dealing with big storage SD card. Now, I use for most of my work the HS, and you know, it produces great quality. All my YouTube videos are done like that all my social media commercial work usually is done like that. And you're not gonna see a lot of difference between the HS and DS. You do see difference in file size and of course between the HS and the i4K. You do see some differences in terms of image quality, but you do see a huge difference when it comes to file size. So choose the right uh, compression format right from the beginning. Now let's talk about s 3 because here it is where Sony cameras shine. And the Sony 74 is no difference. So from the moment that I actually discovered XLO3 a while back ago, I haven't looked back and all my footage is being shot in that profile. Pretty much, you know, it is by default in my camera right now. Now, the way that XLO3 works is it shoots an image that is super flat in contrast. And the purpose of that is that you can actually recover highlights and shadow with the utmost dynamic range in post. Now, looking at a monitor when you're shooting SLO3 can be a little bit confusing or throw you off. So Sony has given us a tool called Gamma Assist. Now, when you enable Gamma Assist, you are going to get a 709 LUT applied to the monitor. Now, that means that the uh, LUT is only applied to the monitor, not to the image. So when you import the image in Premiere or whatever software you use, you're still going to have to do your grading. Now, you may find that picture profile in your camera. Um, I don't remember exactly where Sony puts it uh, when the camera is brand new from factory, but I actually have assigned it to picture profile number three, SLO3, picture profile number three. Super easy to remember, and guess where I have SLO2? Yeah, PP2 is where I have SLO2. So you can rearrange those PP1, PP2 up to 11, I believe it is. Uh, to put whatever picture profile you desired in the order that you want. Now, another great picture profile that Sony gives us with the Sony a7 IV is S Cinetone. And S Cinetone is derived from the color sign from Sony Venice Cinema Line. So basically, you enable that picture profile and you get that cinematic look, you know, right out of the gate without doing any color grading. Now, once again, you gotta remember that that color is gonna be baked into your footage. You still can manipulate some of the parameters in post but you're not gonna get the utmost dynamic range for that. You're gonna have to use a slot three. Now let's talk about native ISO, a very important tool to know and to know when to use it. Now this is gonna be depending the picture profile that you use because the range of ISO varies from picture profile to picture profile. But let's take for example, s 3 which is the picture profile with the utmost dynamic range. The low ISO is going to be 800 ISO and the high is going to be 3200. 
What that means means that at 800 and 3200 ISO, you're gonna get the cleanest image, the lowest amount of noise. And there is a little bit difference between the 800 and the 3200. The 3200 having slightly a little bit of more noise than the 800, but they are pretty similar. Now, when you go from the 800 and you go up towards the 3200, you are gonna start introducing noise right away until you hit the 3200 and the image is then going to be clean again. And then of course, once you depart from the 3200 and up, you're gonna start introducing more noise. Now, Sony cameras are known for having kind of like low noise because they do so well in low light situations. And this one is no exception. Full size HDMI, baby, because you know, we like the full size jokes somewhere in here, but not for real. We like the full size HDMI because it is a pretty robust connection. Whether you're applying in a monitor, whether you're applying a capture card, whatever you're applying to your camera, you don't have to be afraid that if you wiggle a cable a little bit, you can snap the port. Like I have done it twice. One was a micro and one was a mini HDMI. In my personal opinion, I think that Sony should be updating all cameras that are not a one inch sensor with a full size HDMI moving forward. And hey, let's talk about the ports and here you have them. Check them out. All the ports that we've been asking for. So those are the microphone input. You have the uh, headphone monitor uh, output there. We have the USB-C port, which you can use this camera as a webcam as well. Also, that's the same cable that you're gonna use to connect the camera to the computer, download media, uh, plug into apps and so on. And you have the multi port right here that you can use it for some of the Sony accessories. And like we mentioned before, the full size HDMI. Now let's talk about image stabilization because we have finally a vast improvement over the Sony a7 III. Although the Sony a7 III had image stabilization, it was nowhere near to the effectiveness of the Sony a7 IV. This camera features a 5.5 IBIS mechanical, which is also improved from the prior version. But as well, we have the active mode, which is the digital image stabilization that the camera applies and it all happens digitally in camera. It crops a little bit more, giving you a super steady image. Well, not super steady, but much steadier than the mechanical alone. Now, this is something great to have and enable if you're gonna be shooting handheld or you're gonna be shooting with long telephoto or zoom lenses, you know, when you are more prone to introduce shakiness. And it's a great way to mitigate the stabilization without having to deal that in post. Now, however, these cameras record also gyro data. So if you disable the digital image stabilization, you can actually stabilize your footage, kind of like what the camera would be doing in camera in post using Catalyst Browse or some of the new plugins that Sony has released for uh, various editors. So doing so, you know, you're always gonna have the utmost control, but once again, if you're in a pinch, it's good to have that in the camera, enable it and be done with it. Focus breathing compensation, we finally have it in the Sony a7 IV. So what is focus breathing? Focus breathing compensation mitigates with the artifact of racking focus. Like for example, right now, if I put my hand here and I do this, you're not gonna see that zooming in effect because I have focus breathing compensation enabled in my Sony FX3 and the lens that I'm using right now is the 24 millimeter f1.4 and I'm shooting at f1.4. Now I'm gonna show you what it does when I disable focus breathing. See how everything moves and kind of zooms in? That is the artifact that most photo lenses have when uh, racking focus. And in this case, you know, I'm just putting my hand closer to the uh, lens and then it racks to my face. And now back again with focus breathing compensation on, racking focus to my hand, to my face. And as you guys can see, that nasty breathing is gone. So for that, obviously the camera has to crop a little bit more to the recomposition in camera, but you know, I take that any day. And with a 24, actually how I shoot is actually perfect. You know, I like the, um, the reach that this lens gives me. Now, another great tool that Sony gives us in the Sony a7 IV is focus map. In focus map, you can think of another tool similar to focus speaking to gauge your focus. Now, it is a different approach that focus speaking where focus speaking would actually draw a hairline around the areas in focus. This one leaves the area in focus completely clear in your monitor and everything else around is mapped by these blocks of color representing the areas out of focus from your focusing point. So it goes from light blue to red. Now, this is actually a great tool to use when focus peaking doesn't cut it, even at the high uh, setting when you cannot see your focus peaking because of contrast issues with your images. Focus map is a great choice. Now let's talk about juice, battery life. This camera does pretty okay when it comes to battery life. It uses the MPF Z100, 
which is the large battery that Sony has been using in full frame camera and some APS-C as well. Does it have dual SD card slots? Yes, of course it does. Just like the Sony a7 III at a much faster speed. And one of the base also features CF Express compatibility, so you can take advantage of that much faster media. And if you care about professional photography or videography or both, we should talk about dynamic range because the Sony a7 IV does an exceptional job in that department like most Sony camera. Up to 15 stops of dynamic range and great color depth. That means that even in those areas where the image is underexposed or overexposed, you'll be able to recover the shadows or highlights in post without making the image fall apart. Another reason why this camera shines in S-Log3 is because of that wide dynamic range between the shadows and the highlights. Anti-dust function. What a great feature to have in the Sony a7 IV because this is going to protect your sensor from dust from the elements. Uh, and there's nothing worse than actually reviewing a photo shoot or a video shoot and realizing that you had a speck of dust in your sensor. So this option is gonna mitigate that by lowering the shutter curtain every time you turn the camera off. You gotta turn that option by yourself because it doesn't come enabled automatically. And for that, you're gonna press the menu button, select the uh, briefcase icon, setup option, anti-dust function, and you gotta turn it on. Now, another great reason to like the Sony a7 IV, it's because of its capability when shooting with APS-C glass, like this Sigma 56 millimeter f1.4. And this lens produces really good image quality I bring with me all the time. Now at 33 megapixel in APS-C mode, you're gonna obtain an image of 22 megapixels in resolution when you account for the crop factor. And this 56 millimeter f1.4 now becomes an 84 f2.1. And let's continue with the great news because Sony has given us this dial that allows you to switch between photo, video, and SNQ with a flick off a switch without having to go through menus or anything like that. Boom, photo, video, and SNQ, super easy. Now, the other great benefit is that you can also store all your settings individually for photography, for video, and SNQ. So if you're hybrid shooting, taking photos, shooting video, a little bit of SNQ, you can save all the settings individually without having to tweak your settings every time you change mode does save you a lot of time and time is money so who is the sony a744 sony a744 well this is a camera that is going to be great for everyone no matter at their level in their careers whether you're looking for video or photography this is a camera that can do both and that's exactly the audience that this camera is aiming the hybrid shooter the person that wants one body that can do and tackle both tasks well with this 33 megapixel, you're gonna get outstanding images. And when it comes to video, this camera packs a punch for the money. Now we have 4K up to 60p, 10 bit color, 422, S-Log3, S-Cinetone, uh, great dynamic range, and the list goes on, guys. So this is gonna be it for today. I hope I made your decision a little bit easier. Let me know in the comments if you own one or if you're trying to own one. Now, I also encourage you, if you're in the market for a Sony a7 IV, check out some of the used sites that have sometimes you know amazing deals on this camera, and you can get probably one for under $2,000, and I consider that a steal for this camera right here. So. This is gonna wrap it up for today, guys. Let me know in the comments down below if you own one or you're planning to get one, and I hope I made your decision a little bit easier. I'll see you in the next video.